Let's do one final worked example together. I'm gonna skip a big chunk of the exercise and go straight to 9A part one. Now I've picked out this guy, you may be able to guess why, because again, you've got these negative numbers flying around and they're easy to muck up. So I've got x to the power of negative two, that's the thing that I'm integrating. So I put in my square bracket and then I think, what will the primitive function be? Now, if you think back to when you differentiated, if you had some x to the power of n, the first thing we did was we uh, brought down the index and then we reduced the index by one. So conversely, when you are integrating x to the power of n, we're gonna do the exact opposite of that, right? So you are going to increase the power by one and then divide, I should say increase the index by one and then divide by that new index. And in this case, I've written an indefinite integral. So this guy here, is gonna be the basis of what I use. Just be very, very careful with those negative indices because you know I can tell you right now, don't write this. The most common error when students have a look at a question like this is to write this. Right, it's so very, very close, right? What have they done? They've said, oh, two goes up into three, and then I divide by that new index. It's so close to being right. Like it looks, you'll evaluate it, you'll get some reasonable numbers out. And the problem of course is, when you increase negative two by one, you don't get negative three, you get negative one. So this is actually what we should be writing as the primitive. Let me write that in the correct color to indicate that. So this is the primitive we should have ended up with. That goes from five up to 10. Um, now at this point, rather than going straight into my uh, evaluation using the fundamental theorem, my f of 10 take away f of b, I will take the opportunity to do a teeny bit of cleanup here and this will often be the case. So before I evaluate, I'm gonna say that negative on the denominator, that looks a bit gross, I'm gonna put it up the top, so negative one up there, and x to the power of negative one, a negative index is really about division, right? So the, the next, the x to the power of negative one can become an x on the denominator. That's a bit tidier for me to deal with. So now I'm ready to evaluate. I'm gonna do the upper bound 10, subtract it from the lower bound five. So that gives me negative one over 10. I'm gonna take away negative one over five. Now. I'm gonna just give the same caution that I gave before. Be deathly careful with your negative signs here. Um, you can see, for example, um, these brackets that I put around the negative one over 10, they're completely unnecessary. Like it doesn't add anything really to have them there. But for me, it's such a helpful mental thing to have them there and then to mirror them when I do, when I do F of A. This ensures that when I do the subtraction and the double negatives and sometimes there's triple negatives, it can be very, very confusing. Um, this will make sure I get all the signs right. So I'm gonna have the negative one over 10 out the front. Double negative becomes plus one over five. And if you're thinking again about your common denominators that are one over five is two tenths. So that's going to be one over 10. There's my answer, okay? So what have we learned? Well, this fundamental theorem of calculus, right? What it enables us to do, and you'll see this as we go further into the next few exercises, what it enables us to do is to think about the areas under curves of shapes that are really weird and wacky. So for example, um, let's just have a look at this one here, x to the power of negative two. What does that even look like, right? Well, if I just bring, whoops, let's bring this guy up from the side here. All right, uh, x to the power of negative two, and you're welcome to open up Desmos yourself and play along at home. There's x to the power of negative two. Ooh, where's it gone? Huh, I've done something funny with my indices. Let's try that again. Ah, there we go. All right, so there's my, I need to see more of this graph. x to the power of negative two. It's a weird looking graph. You're like, oh my gosh, I hope I'm not expected to know how to graph that. Well, not as part of this particular question, but I'm gonna use this graph nonetheless to help you illustrate what's going on. What's the area that corresponds to the uh, value that we got before? Well, I'm considering from five all the way over to 10. Now, if you wanna actually show where that area is, what you do is you say, okay, well, let's shade something. I don't know if you knew that you could shade regions in Desmos. Here's the way you would do it. You would say from y up into x to the power of negative two. This is gonna shade everything underneath that graph that we just did, but I actually don't want everything. I only want a particular spot from five to 10. So I'm gonna use, you gotta to go to your other keyboard here, some curly braces. I'm gonna go from five to 10. Now you can't see that very clearly here, so let me zoom in for you. I'm gonna change the vertical axis while I'm at it. There we go. Uh, that's much more useful. All right, that's looking more reasonable. Now, 
this is the area that we were evaluating. Now, I have no idea what formula you could use. Like that's, they're not parts of circles or quadrants or triangles. It's a curvy, weird shape, but calculus enables us to find out that black area nonetheless because of the fundamental theorem of calculus. Um, you're very perceptive and I, I admit I did do this I did slightly pull a fast one on you, so let me explain a little more clearly. Um, how did I flip the x on negative one? All right, so actually in truth, um, let's, let's unpack this in more detail on its own. So let's just uh, take this guy here um, and let's, let's get some new space for it. Okay, so. So this, this is a bit of a mess, and what I've done is, uh, and I apologize, I've done two things at the same time. So number one, the numerator is messy, and number two, the denominator is messy, and I tried to clean up both of them at the same time. Let's do them one at a time instead. So when I have a look at this fraction, right, I'll deal with the denominator first, it's a bit easier. To change the denominator to be positive, because ordinarily when we write um, fractions, we like the denominators to be positive, just like we like denominators to be um, rational. So if you think back to like year nine and 10, we spent a long time, if you got a third, you would rationalize the denominator. Um, oh, screen's blank, oh, what happened? Hold on, what's going on? Can you see Mrs. Lee's? There we go, yeah, now, but it was blank. It's oh, I see. Uh, I maximized, sorry, my fault. Okay, let me start that again. So um, here we've got this messy looking fraction, right? And I want the top and bottom to be negative, right? Okay, so let's just, let's just deal with that. We won't worry about thirds. So to do that, I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by the same thing. Uh, so long as I multiply the top and the bottom by the same thing, I actually still have the same fraction. So the easiest way to fix that is to multiply the top and the bottom by negative one. Okay, if I do that, let me just make sure I'm on the right spot in the chat. If I do that, the fraction is still the same, but it will get rid of that negative that you saw on the bottom, right? So I'm going to write this as negative x to the negative one divided by negative one times negative one, negatives cancel, I just get positive one. Are you happy with that part? Yeah? Let me, give me, give me a thumbs up, Mo, if you've got that part. Okay, fantastic, right? So we've dealt with the denominator, now let's deal with the numerator. Now, in some ways, maybe the easiest thing is to actually pull the same trick, right? I'm gonna multiply the top and the bottom by the same thing so that everything stays the same, right? This time, to get rid of this negative index on the top, I'm gonna to multiply by x to the power of one on x to the power of one. Same thing on the top and the bottom. So I'm not changing the fraction, I'm just gonna make it look a little bit different. Okay, so let's have a think. Um, what happens to the top? Well, I've got x to the power of negative one and then I've got x to the power of one. Hit pause on that, let's have a look at the bottom. I've got one time x, uh, did you see it? Okay, good. So on the bottom, I'm just gonna have x. And now on the top here, we'll just have a look, right? When you multiply numbers, um, indices, where the bases are the same, well, we just add the indices, right? So I'm gonna get negative x to the power of zero. Anything to the power of zero, though, is just one. So that's where I get negative one over X. That's a bit of a long-winded way to do it, so I kind of was a bit sneaky squeezing all of that into a single line of working. Um, but I guess, uh, and this actually is maybe another thing um, to add to Mrs. Lee's point about negative numbers, the other thing that you're going to get um, over and over again is your index laws are just going to appear and they're just going to be brutal. Like every question is going to be like five index questions all packed in at the same time. And it's a bit like, um, I know I've used this analogy before, but I'm just going to use it again. It's, it's like when you first learn to drive, right? When you first learn to drive, you're like, oh my gosh, how do I hold the steering wheel, um, not jerk it so people like go flying out of their seats and brake and change the gear and oh my gosh, I'm learning manual because I'm crazy and now I've got to do the clutch as well. And they feel like all these separate things in your brain, but eventually, maybe you're up to this point already, Moe, um, they become kind of second nature. Your brain is actually fitting them all into things that you're like, oh, I can do these without thinking too hard about them and therefore focus on the things that I need to concentrate on. Um, so in this case, the indices and the negatives and the fractions, these are things that go back to, you know, years seven, eight, nine, etc. right? So this is building on all of that and it's kind of treating that as assumed knowledge and saying, hey, you really need to master that so that you can focus on the calculus here. Um, and what Mrs. Lee said before is true, um, where, students lose their marks is often not on the calculus at all. It's on stuff they learned in year seven to 10 or didn't learn in year seven to 10.